Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. Alan and I are here to talk to you again about a new storage device review that just went up. This is the OCZ Revo Drive 350. Yep. And this is, is this is the latest generation of what they have created around the Revo Drive brand here, right? It is. So what, what makes a Revo Drive a Revo Drive? It's a PCI Express based SSD essentially? Uh, basically, um, it's different than what uh, some other companies have done. Like Intel did like an SSD 910 or whatnot way back yep. when, and that was uh, basically a RAID chip and four SSDs, and it didn't really perform that great because it was an off-the-shelf kind of a RAID chip. Okay. Meant for hard drives, basically. Uh, OCZ with their Revo drives for actually the past several generations of them now, um, they use a chip called a VCA chip. So a VCA chip is uh, basically really fast at just passing along queued commands onto whatever drives are underneath it. So, um, so that replaces the RAID chip on some other PCI Express based SSDs. Right, it, and it works similarly. It works as if it was a RAID zero. Okay, it's, it, it's responsible for the d distribution of data amongst right. the different controllers. Right. Okay. It just does it in such a way that it's not really a bottleneck when it comes to scaling to really high IOs per second. So, okay. like uh, when we tested, you know, we tested the the Z Drive R4, which is like the enterprise version of the Revo Drive. Mm -hmm. Right. Same kind of chip except it had eight Sandforce controllers, and it scaled way high on iOS per second, like just insanely high. Right? How many controllers does this drive have? This drive has four. So, so there's four individual Sandforce controllers. Correct. And the model we tested is actually the 480 gig Yes, version. 480 gig. Uh, and so as far as specs go, uh, yeah. these are actually pretty good, because now the VCA chip is talking to the rest of the system over PCI Express by eight where the okay. Revo 3X2, which was the last Revo drive, like consumer-grade Revo drive we looked at, was, uh, I believe, PCI Express 2.0 by 4. So this is 2.0 by 8? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So more, more communication, right? Uh, should drop the latency a little bit because you're not waiting on, on stuff as much. All right. right. The bus is just much faster. Um, 408 gig model is uh, rated at max read uh, 180 meg per second, max write 100, or sorry. 1.8 gig. 1.8 gig per second. Right. Uh, max write 1.7... Uh, gig per second. We actually saw higher than that. On Addo, we saw like just right at, if not, just kind of bouncing around uh, two gig per second, dead even on okay. reads. And writes were like 1.9, 1.85, something like that. So that's so, actually so pretty damn fast. Yeah, it's it's definitely up there on speed. And I realize that, th that those throughputs are for the 480 gig and for the 960 gig, not for the 240 gig. What's the difference there? Uh, it's roughly half, actually. It's one gig per second. Is that because 240 gig only has two controllers on we, it? I suspect. Okay. Yes. We don't know. We don't have that model in, but based on the specs that you see, yeah, we're it's, guessing it's, it's half as many controllers. It, it's almost a neat halving of everything else. The IO per second okay. ratings, everything, it just kind of drops. Now, this is a consumer-based drive. We talked about the Z drive kind of being the enterprise level product. This right. is obviously for an extreme high-end enthusiast, somebody who's really concerned about yep. you know, storage performance. Um, where is it at in terms of relation to other PCI Express options out there? The most recent one we saw was uh, from Intel, their like P3700, and that was using NVMe right. instead of what this is using AHCI. This, this is still SATA using based protocols. Yeah, it's still. It, I believe it connects to the system as if it was like a SCSI device, like a SCSI RAID device. Okay. The communication is AHCI, so that's how it handles its command queuing and whatnot, um, which is the older tech. Now we can say that. Now that now NVMe that, is actually yeah, has a product. Yeah, now that there is an actually NVMe products, right? Okay. Um, and considering how high the iOS per second is on this device, uh, it, like I think it would benefit from NVMe if it was supported, but it's not, right? right. It's, you're getting into those really high iOS per second where that's the point where the system starts to become a bottleneck, right? right. Um, so, but, but granted, it's still really fast card. It's not as if the AHCI is completely null and void, right? right? It still works. Sure. Um, not only that, but the NVMe products aren't necessarily bootable on all systems yet. It's a BIOS limitation, not like a, you know, the BIOS Technology needs to, limitation. Yeah, the BIOS needs to be able to communicate to an NVMe device as opposed to an AHCI device. Right. right. Every BIOS can talk to AHCI just fine. Um, so this device, that means this device is bootable on everything. Whatever you plug it okay. into, it's bootable. So that's an advantage right? there. That's an advantage. Is greater compatibility as far as being bootable, stuff like that. What about pricing? Okay, so the pricing is. A I think bit, the most a interesting thing we saw was it scales pretty dramatically. It changes right. based on the capacity of the uh, Revo Drive 350 that you actually buy. Right. So, so most SSDs, just in general, PCI or 
sadder or whatnot. Uh, lately, you see them scale linearly, right? They're about the same cost per gig as you go through different capacities. Right. Um, it used to be that the highest end capacity was the premium price point. You had to spend like even more money to get the mm -hmm. highest capacity, right? Uh, as far as cost per gig, mm -hmm. right? Um, this is backwards. It's um, this is how I had expected it to be based on uh, you know kind of rules of. Uh, quantity rules of like how many controllers you're paying for yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so the, the the 240 gig model is the most expensive in terms of price per gig. Yes, it's 530 bucks, two dollars twenty cents a gig. Okay. That feels like a regression in in kind of like availability of solid state tech. Well, I mean, so this is a very good performing PCI Express device, and that's just a little bit over like the mid grade. P like the P3600, what its pricing is going to be, which is around $2 a gig. Okay, okay. Right? Um, and, then no. if you, and then if you want pricing that's more competitive with what will be the P3500 when mm -hmm. it finally comes out, realize it's not out yet, Right. Um, th that the uh, 960 gig model is 1300 bucks, which seems kind of steep, 1300 bucks, <laughs> but it's $1.35 a gig at that price. So that's... A really big disparity, right? It's a $2.20 a gig for the lowest capacity, which actually has half the number of Sandforce controllers, too. Right? Right, so, yeah. So it's, you can't, yeah. you can't, you kind of lose the argument on, well, it has the same number of everything else. No, it doesn't, actually. It's hmm. half. Okay. Right? It still has the VCA chip, but it has half the number of controllers. And so then the 480 gig that we tested, it falls in between that and the price per gig. Yeah. Yeah, it falls right in the middle. It's a dollar seventy-three a gig at eight hundred and thirty dollars. So this guy right here is eight hundred and thirty bucks. It's still a lot of money to invest in a solid-state drive for an enthusiast system. But half a terabyte and it goes two gigabytes a second. Right. That's or if you jump up to the to the nine sixty gig version, you're almost a terabyte at a cheaper per gigabyte option. Right, again. and the same specs. But a larger upfront investment. De still. Definitely yes, if you absolutely positively need a terabyte. Um, now realize the controllers are Sandforce, mm -hmm. and they do compress data that can be compressed, right? So you get a little bit of a bump there if your data is compressible, if not, okay. not so much, right? Um, I think the other thing we wanted to mention on this was kind of the disparity we saw between Windows 8 and Windows 7 performance. Yes. Um, so the driver that launched with this Revo is the... It's version 2.0 yeah, of that series of drivers. It's, it's their version 2.0... Um, Revo drive driver. And realize that's almost like a unified architecture. If you have any Revo drive... Same driver for all the different can, models. Yeah, like any Revo drive that had a VCA2 chip on it, same kind of driver, okay. right? So the newer driver uh, is much improved for Windows 8 as far as that performance goes. Um, that's what enabled this to go that fast, right? And like I would say that the, the older, if the older driver was still a thing on Windows 8, right, um, it probably wouldn't be able to scale as high as it did. Okay. Um, now, that was good, but if you're running it on Windows 7, we ran into some kind of oddities. Um, depending on what kind of workload you threw at it, some of the bench some of the synthetic benchmarks would look just really horrible, like abnormally horrible. Hmm. But then something like our file copy test actually looked okay. But then if you ran something like Addo, which we don't usually publish Addo results, but um, we'll definitely include them in this piece just to show for comparison. Right. Uh, something like Addo that puts a file on the file system and then just modifies it in place, it did really weird things, like really you know, lower performance when you used it and maybe, in Windows 7. Maybe even more curious or interesting is that if we, when we reverted back to the previous version 1 driver, 1 1.3 something or whatever yeah. it was, performance of, those dri of came, that drive came back improved a lot. in right. Windows 7. Yeah. So something in what they changed from the version 1.3 to the version 2.0 of that driver Changed how um, their VCA2 controller probably right. interacts with Windows, right. in particular Windows 7. Yeah. So uh, it would, I think our recommendation would be if you're buying one of these drives that you are running Windows 8 or 8.1 8 essentially. Yeah, I, I, you pretty much, it, Windows 8.1 was such an improvement on the newest driver, mm -hmm. like it really is just really fast, right? You're, you're, just, you're just, at this point, you're silly not to be running something like this on Windows 8.1. Right. Right. Uh, also, um, that new driver you absolutely want to run on Windows 8.1 because it, it also adds uh, trim support through the VCA chip. Okay. So normally that's a complication. There's very few RAID devices. Actually, I don't think there's any... RAID like, controllers that will pass trim. Like an aftermarket PCI Express RAID controller that passes trim through itself to the individual controllers underneath it. Right. 
that's we haven't seen that. Anywhere. So that's that's actually a good feature, but it's right now it's it it's supposedly it will work in both Windows Seven and Windows Eight, but in Windows Seven it's causing it's, it's, it seems to be causing some kind of performance. Yeah, issue. it's it's doing some weird things. Yeah. Maybe they're going to revise the driver moving forward. Who knows? But really, just avoid the complication. Use right. Windows Eight. Yeah, but, but we haven't tested it specifically, but I think the thing that would uh, that would bite you the worst with this device on Windows Seven with the new driver is probably uh, virtual machines. Because those are files that are in place on and the system. Like small reads and writes and, and within certain it, sections yeah, of those right. files. Right, and okay. you'd probably see some kind of a performance hit there. But again, you wouldn't see that under Windows 8.1. So, just Interesting complication, but I don't think the end of the world. Again, no. somebody who's spending that kind of money on a storage device like this, hopefully is kind of they're moving probably along on, their yeah, tech they're, yeah, they're probably as on they go. Yeah. Um, so it, this is the... OCZ Revo Drive 350. You've got uh, your full review up on the site right now mm -hmm. as well. So if you want to check out all the benchmarks, if you want to see the teardown photos and all that, those will be included in that review as well. And then your kind of final conclusion on do you recommend it, do you not, uh, and for what kind of buyer and for what market. Uh, really. I, actually, I can kind of do some of the recommendation even just on this video. Um, for, for the time being, with the current state of computer BIOSes and such and mm -hmm. compatibility with NVMe devices, or I should say potential incompatibility. If you want really fast PCI Express, this is the way to go right now. Okay. Right? Like if you want to buy something right now, this is it. Actually, because the P3500 isn't even out yet. Yeah, we're still right. waiting on it. Yeah, so. If you there want you a terabyte, you can get a terabyte of storage for twelve ninety nine, almost a terabyte of storage for about twelve ninety nine. It's available. It's for sale now on Newegg and yeah. Amazon. Like which this is, is not a pre release thing. Which is so. a little bit cheaper cost per gig than the P3500 will be. Would be. Yep. Yeah, when it comes out. So. Yep. Uh, check out that review at PCPer.com. We've got the link in the notes below. Otherwise, we'll be back later uh, with more to talk about, guys. Thanks.